and will be put online for dissemination purposes. So um, if there's anything, uh, so um, we're assuming that you've consented to that, uh, to being part of that recording. Sorry, there is a bit of a delay on the slides. Right, uh, as I said, we've got some speakers lined up for you today. Um, this webinar is actually a follow on from one that we held about a year, 18 months ago on um, enablers and barriers to replication of smart city solutions, which was based on some research that was done uh, by Vito as part of the Smart Cities Information System. And what we'd like to do as part of this webinar is um, find out what uh, where that research has been taken in that period of time. And we're also, um, going to some other cities um, where uh, we are going to find out the practicalities of replication, how it's happened on the ground and whether the challenges and barriers and enablers are um, match what the research was telling us uh, some time ago. So we'll be finding out first-hand experience in some of these cities where replication has been happening. I'm apologizing for the Yes, uh, we have speakers. We've got Yella from Vito, who is part of the Smart Cities Information System, and he will be sharing a sort of update on the research that was done. We have Mauro from the municipality of Palencia, Ivanka from Sofia, Susanna from Lieka, apologies for the pronunciation there, and Daniela from Burgas. And as you will see, uh, we have our agenda. Um, my, sorry, technology is getting the better of me. Uh, we have our agenda here, so it, we will have, you're having your introduction from me now, and then we'll go into looking at the tools for replication and uh, then our uh, five speakers, and then we'll have the discussion and question and answer session after that. Right. Um, so by way of introduction, uh, <laughs> sorry, technology is not happening for me today. My apologies. Uh, my name is Brooke Flanagan. I'm a project coordinator on uh, smart cities at EuroCities. And we are one of the partners who are delivering the uh, smart cities information system along with uh, Vito and um, Steinbeis, who uh, have been integral in the um, organization of this webinar. The Smart Cities Information System, as you can see there, is essentially a platform for exchange and collaboration uh, on smart cities and smart city solutions with a particular focus on energy, mobility and ICT. Um, there are a lot of um, interesting uh, tools and guidance on the website, so I would absolutely recommend you go and visit that if you haven't already. Um, the SCIS also brings together a lot of the lessons learned from over 100 different smart cities projects, um, starting off with uh, FP6 and Concerto through to FP7 and where we are currently, which is the Horizon 2020 Smart Cities and Communities projects. There are currently about 17 of those projects and over 100 cities involved. So there are a lot of lessons to be learned and to be shared on on implementation, replication and scale up through those cities, which is something SCIS is seeking to do. Um, just quickly, um, a lot of those projects within smart city, within the smart cities and communities um, uh, group, if I can call them that, uh, have been developing tools for replication. As they get towards the end, replication and the, and, and the lessons learned from that are quite are very important, especially sharing those to a much wider group. Um, Part of the SCIS have now uh, published, uh, are publishing a range of solution booklets and the first three have already been published, which you can see along the bottom there around urban freight logistics, PV and battery storage and e-buses. There will also be some other ones, but there are some other ones in development at the moment and you can find the link to them in the slide. 
But what they do is give you a detailed overview of the measures and some of the key things that you need to consider when replicating things like business models, governance, some of the regulatory measures required and examples of good practice. Um, one of the projects that I work on is Sharing Cities, which is one of the Smart Cities and Communities book um, projects. And we are in the process of publishing a range of smart booklets and playbooks there around the particular smart city solutions that are part of Sharing Cities. So I'd also recommend that uh, if you're interested in any of those solutions, then please check those out on the Sharing Cities website. And we will also be working on a replication handbook and upcoming webinar series around each of those smart city solutions. So um, everyone is welcome to join those webinars, which will be held. We've got seven webinars on seven measures, which will be happening uh, from this month through to November, with some exceptions for July and August, where everyone will have a little bit of a break from webinars. So that's it from me as part of the introduction. I'm going to hand over to Yella now uh, to give you some insights on the replication uh, research that was done and an update uh, from that webinar that I mentioned that was held about 18 months ago. Once again, a reminder to, uh, to um, put your questions in the questions section on the box on, uh, on the control panel as we go through and we will refer to those in the question section. So over to you now, Yella. Thank you, Brooke, for the introduction. Uh, do I have control over the slides already? Um, I believe Annika will be handing it over to you. Yeah. If your mouse follows the, the second mouse, then you should have access to that. Yes, that's the case. OK. It's just a little bit of a delay in changing slides. All right, so uh, indeed I will use the next 10 minutes to present an update on our insights related to replication. And what I will present today is mainly based on the uh, first SCIS policy paper, which was written by my colleague Han van de Vivere and which deals specifically with uh, replication. In the meantime, we've also published new materials which are relevant to mentioning the context of replication. So I would like to also refer to the second SCIS uh, policy paper shown on the middle of this slide, which addresses challenges and opportunities related to the upscaling of urban residential retrofit in the EU. In this policy paper, you can also find interesting material which links to some of the topics we will discuss today. And then of course, there is a previous webinar which you can always consult on the SCIS website. I would also like to refer to the SCIS solution booklets. Brooke already briefly mentioned them. So the solution booklets are actually 30 to 40 page documents discussing one smart city topic at a time. They are primarily written for cities, but of course they can also be useful for other stakeholders. Uh, the booklets seek to reduce the efforts for implementing smart city solutions to speed up the process and strengthen the quality and confidence in outputs. Uh, they, they generally prepare a city to engage the market and, and acquire a solution. In these solution booklets, we identify barriers and challenges, but also opportunities, and we provide recommendations. So this material is also very relevant when it comes to replicating solutions because it provides you with a wealth of insights from uh, previous experiences. On this slide, I've included the links to the material. You can find it all on the SIS website, the link of which I mentioned explicitly on this slide on the top right. So now let's look at our insights on uh, replication and why it may or may not be happening. First of all, and uh, most of you who are familiar with replication will probably confirm this, replication is, is challenging. Everything must be there at the right place in the right moment. The technologies, the business models, the favorable legal context, the governance structure, social acceptance, user motivation, capacities and knowledge, budgets, aligned agendas, and so on. And in this whole process, trust building is very important. Actors that are not used to work together must do so. This brings us to pursue what uh, Peter Ratje, uh, who is involved in the Smart and City project, calls the city journey. Um, they, 
there must be a solid story with its champions, financiers, executors and users lined up for the particular endeavor. Then um, now what have we learned from our analysis uh, of several smart city projects? We, we have learned that business as usual is, is too easy. Uh, we'll, it will not be enough to tackle the challenges ahead of us. Unfortunately, it is exactly business as usual that destroys the triggers for change. And it is precisely the way as we do things today that is bl the blocking factor for what we can structurally change tomorrow. Um, these are, um, there are some parameters on, on a macro level that make it difficult to change deeply anchored routines and practices at micro level. Um, more precisely, if, if one individual or community adheres to a logic that goes against the wider societal flow of logic by, for example, taking into account externalities when making a business case, then this local community will probably encounter a disadvantage because the wider society does not take into account these externalities. And it is what we refer to as the everyone or no one syndrome. In, in this example, either everyone takes into account externalities, either no one does. And so in order to overcome this barrier, particular and locally differentiated uh, triggers and the identification of, of windows of opportunity will be essential. We see that companies often adhere to uh, a short-term profit logic, which in turn leads to a lack of, of innovation. There is also risk aversion within companies, but also, for example, with financiers. There is a lack of capacity or skilled and, and knowledgeable workforce. And this is also an important factor which is obstructing replication. We uh, notice there is substantial pressure to deliver results on the short term. This is the case both for uh, companies and for public authorities. For companies, I already mentioned uh, the short-term profit logic. Public authorities from their side are administered through short-term political cycles, resulting in a pressure to provide achievements for the corresponding short-term rather than to foster a long-term structural change. Another barrier for application which we encountered is related to prices. Fossil fuel prices remain too low and experts agree that in order to steer the economy into sustainable directions, we would actually, actually need a carbon price of at least around 100 euros per ton. Next, uh, in order to move from incremental innovation to the disruptive type of innovation that is required for upscaling and speeding up the energy transition, cities need to break through their organizational silos. And uh, the last point I'd like to mention on this slide is that uh, city projects, they imply behavioral change. Asking people to adapt their behavior may actually be, be one of the toughest challenges encountered. A substantial amount of knowledge has been built in this field, so we should also make use of it because it may actually turn out to be as important as knowledge on technical solutions or business models. Then it's important to, to mention that context matters, but we should now we should we should know uh, when it matters and, and when it doesn't. So on the one hand, we should take into account context specific parameters. But on the other hand, we should also aim for a certain degree of uniformity in order to be able to scale up. And very often we tend to look at uh, payback times in order to decide whether a project is interesting or not. However, taking into account secondary benefits would make renovation, for example, much more interesting. Another aspect we should look at increasingly is, is willingness to pay. Uh, experience in energy efficiency projects throughout Europe indicates that the, the main triggers for homeowners to energy retrofit their houses are not the, the savings on the energy bills, that is the, the payback time. Other arguments such as increased comfort and healthier uh, or a more beautiful home are uh, much more important. 
then a specific reason for business as usual being favored over the replication of innovative solutions is that regulatory frameworks are often designed for the status quo rather than for change. And the devil is often in the details, but the opportunities as well. Uh, challenging regulation can be, change changing regulation, I wanted to say, changing regulation can be extremely cost effective. And many projects realize uh, suboptimal schemes due to regulatory bottlenecks. These regulatory bottlenecks often in the first place have a technical impact, but by consequence, they will also have a financial impact. Rereading the rules may be uh, a very simple solution, and many project actors think along established lines of, of action uh, when it comes to interpreting the regulatory context. However, practice reveals that restudying um, the given rules may, may bring forward possibilities that were previously ignored. Now let's have a look at how to overcome the, the every uh, one, everybody or, or no one syndrome, which I mentioned a couple of slides earlier. High level regulation um, may actually uh, reveal the local policy trap because local politicians can blame Europe for the high standards and thus create more maneuvering space for having uh, the stringent rules, stringent rules uh, locally applied. So to a certain extent, this high level action um, can be a solution for the everyone or uh, no one syndrome. And then I'll finish my presentation here with this slide. Um, over the years, we have encountered many barriers when it comes to replication. And we've also been able to provide suggestions on what the solutions could be. Up until now, it has been a very interesting search for the right approach, and that's why we included this quote from Bjorn Westling uh, from the IRIS project, who said, replication is like the holy grail, everyone is search searching, but no one seems to be able to find it. Many questions related to, to replication remain to be answered, and therefore uh, I'm very curious to learn more about the experiences from the fellow cities in, in the rest of this webinar. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ella. Uh, we will now hand over to our next speaker, who is uh, Mauro Alonso Meradomo, who is from the Palencia municipality. Mauro, hopefully you. you should be getting control of the slides now. Thank you very much, Broke. Good morning, everyone. I will try. Okay, perfect. I'm Mauro Alonso, technician of the local development agency from Palencia Municipality, Spain, which is in charge to help the departments of the city council to manage projects related to the smart city, most of them financed by the European Union. Today, I will explain to you briefly how we develop one of those projects, smart street lighting. In 2010, Palencia based its street lighting on the traditional sodium or mercury vapor lamps. The energy cost of public lighting in Palencia was 8% of the municipal budget. The network was obsolete and inefficient. The maintenance costs were high, and that year the city signed the Covenant of Mayors committing to a 20% reduction in greenhouse gas emission by 2020. In this context, the City Council took the decision to change the street lamppost for more efficient ones and manage the network in a simpler and less costly way without having to make costly investment. The measure taken was to implement a model contract novel in Spain, mixed service and supplies with energy service company, ESCO, which renewed 30% of the Palencia street lighting to LED technology and implemented a two-way point-to-point -point control system managing on a public lighting managed platform. This change allowed to reduce the energy consumption about 75% compared to the previous installation. A nearly 871 tons of greenhouse gas emission per year were reduced, fulfilling the 20% reduction in emission seen in the Covenant of Mayors. On the economic level, using an ESCO to carry out the chains of lamppost safe, 
the city council more than two million euros needed to reno renovate the street lampos and to update and install the new control system. For the citizens, it means an improvement in the quality of lighting, thanks to a chromatic reproduction index of almost 70 and provide a color temperature similar to those of natural light. The City of Council of Palencia replicate the good practice of three Spanish cities that in that moment was replacing public lighting with LED technology in collaboration with the Institute for Diversification and Energy Savings from the Ministry of Environment Transition. The first step we, do, we did was to carry out an energy audit of the Palencia Street Lighting, geolocating all the elements of the network and defining their technical and functional characteristics. The second step was to draw up a model of technical condition to be met by ESCO for the replacement of street lighting with electric technology, ensuring the quality of service. And finally, we develop a model of administrative long-term contract between ESCO and the City Council, which was paid with the economic savings in the reduction of electricity consumption and included the following four services, managing the purchase and supply of electricity, implementation and maintenance of the public lighting management system, total guarantee of repair with replacement of all damaged elements in the installations, and works for the improvement and renovation of a street lighting installation are defined in the contract. We achieve this renovation and ensure its sustainability and good performance, ESCO choose Philips LED technology, updating the old lamppost by LED models with a similar power ratio, but higher color rendering. In addition, the lamppost control system was upgraded by transform transforming the existing hourly clock system by a two-way point-to-point -point system connected by radio frequency to the controller's devices which monitor lamp post operation and connect by GPRS to the city touch platform where the network is managed and lighting levels are regulated according to areas and needs. The most important barriers that the city council encountered in developing this project were the economic one. The city didn't have the necessary budget to change the street light of the city. The second was the technology. The lack of the lack of knowledge of LED technology prevent us from ensuring the same quality of service we had. And the third, administrative, administrative and legal, because there was no public procurement model that combined supplies with energy efficient criteria. In collaboration with the Institute for Energy Diversification and Saving, we develop a contract model for energy service and integra integral maintenance for public lighting that allow contracting energy service company, ESCO. Among the advantages offered by these contracts was the energy efficient investment in street lighting are financed directly for saving, and the ESCO took the risk of the necessary works and installation, being able to guarantee energy savings based on their experience to achieve the best technical solution. In this way, we overcome the three barriers, the administrative, through a mixed contract of supply and service with investment, the technology by hearing uh, ESCO that was responsible for achieving, achieving the most innovative and efficient technology, and the economic, because the ESCO financed the renewal LED lamppost. After the success of this experience, the city of Palencia continued to change the rest of the lighting system. Municipal technicians are more familiar with the technology. Material installation quality have improved. The economic situation is better than before. So the procur procurement system we follow nowadays is direct investment without the aid of an ESCO, which means all savings are directly applied to city budget. The future objective is that dimming controls and two-way communication are linked to other sensors, such as pressure sensors, air quality sensors, even Wi-Fi network provider or video cameras, 
which could play a vital role as part of smart city networks. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mauri. That was uh, very interesting. And I think that final slide there is uh, quite a good summary of um, the challenges and barriers and where you're headed in the future. So thank you very much. Um, next up, we have Ivanka Padleva from uh, Sofia Energy Center. Um, hopefully, the slide control has been handed over now. Thanks, Ivanka. Uh, thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. And thank you for being here to listen to my presentation. Uh, yeah, I have the control. Yeah. Okay. Let's see how it works. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. It works. So uh, today uh, I will be presenting the experience in the building retrofit uh, by Asenovgrad, um, which is our uh, Asenovgrad is a partner in Smart in City project, and our organization, Sofia Energy Center, is supporting Asenovgrad in their uh, along their journey towards sustainability. Uh, that's why I'm presenting on behalf of Asenovgrad municipality. Just a couple of words about Asenovgrad. It's a rather small town around. 50,000 inhabitants only. Uh, it's located in the south central region of Bulgaria and it's very close to the second biggest town, Plovdiv. Uh, so it's um, their experience relates more, mostly to um, smaller towns that face, in, in our experience, they face uh, different challenges than the bigger ones or their challenges can be described in a different way, if I would say like this. Of course, the challenges are more or less of the same nature, but if you are a smaller town, then um, the situation is different and the solutions can be different. Um, yeah, that's, that's me, I guess. Maybe it takes some time. Could yes, it tends to. I, uh, so, uh, my next slide is uh, focusing on the summarized results of the building retrofit um, activities in Asenovgrad. Um, uh, the, uh, the activities are directed towards two um, targets. One is the public, public municipal buildings belonging to the municipality. Uh, schools, kindergartens, administrative buildings, community centers, things like this and nine educational schools and kindergarten buildings were refurbished uh, for more than 2 million euros. Uh, the other main focus is private multifamily residential buildings, which are quite common in Bulgaria, mostly prefabricated panel type um, as a construction uh, with a lot of um, uh, families or, or households that inhabit them. For instance, in one panel building, there can be more than 50 different uh, families living. And usually they are owner occupied. So there are 50 different owners in these buildings that has, uh, have to, to, be, to be come together in order to do the refurbishment, which is quite a challenge, I would say. But yeah, I will present later how we overcome this. Uh, so, 28 buildings of this type, private multifamily residential buildings, were refurbished, mostly panel type or con concrete, uh, cast concrete construction. And the total investment was over 12 million euros. Uh, of course, when doing uh, these activities, uh, they uh, needed a lot of um, stakeholders, especially citizen involvement, and especially for private uh, multifamily residential buildings. So a promotional campaign was organized and conducted. Um, I put here from the year 2015 uh, until 2019, but it's still ongoing. I mean, uh, yeah, the most, uh, most of the effort was in the beginning to make things uh, moving, but uh, it's, it's never ending experience. I mean, the promotional activities and 
trying to, to replicate what has been achieved is an ongoing um, activity. Uh, yes, and uh, what else? Uh, during this uh, these activities, especially for private um, uh, residential buildings, the municipality acted as an information point for the citizens, for its citizens, but also for some kind of um, assessing structure, a structure to assess their eligibility and, and the ways they can comply with the funding requirements. Uh, there is a national program financed by the government uh, for uh, to assist the private residential building refurbishment, especially concrete and panel type buildings, which is underway in Bulgaria. So the municipality was an active partner in this um, in util, uh, in accessing this uh, funding and in implementing it into practice in order to, to have these results. So what uh, measures have been implemented? I think that these, these are more or less standard measures uh, when uh, it comes to building refurbishment. So um, of course it started with energy audits. Yeah, for private residential building, it started with the registration of own, so-called owners associations because I, as I already explained, there are many um, owners in one building. Each, um, each apartment is owned by its inhabitants, so in, by the household that lives there. So that means that there are 50 or more different owners in one building. And in order to, to implement the building the refurbishment measures, uh, they should come into an agreement. So the first step was to establish a legal structure called owner association. Then, of course, energy audits of buildings in order to see what measures uh, should be implemented uh, and uh, to assess how much it would cost. Um, for this prefabricated panel, because sometimes there is an issue of, of the structural soundness uh, of, the, of the building, so it was um, mandatory in order to access this national program, the funding from the national program, to have this um, inspection of structural soundness, of construction soundness of the building. Um, and then after all this has been done as preparatory uh, works, then uh, the measures include building shell insulation, replacement of doors and windows, refurbishment of Staircases, entrance halls, basements. Oops, sorry. Yep. Uh, replacement of obsolete uh, utility pipings. Uh, I, I would say that um, it was a kind of question if it should be eligible under a, a program for energy refurbishment, but at the end it was decided that this is the time to do it because the whole building is being refurbished so why to waste this opportunity uh, and also refurbishment and um, measures for uh, for the surrounding spaces of buildings for the common how to say ground around the buildings uh, including implement implementation of energy saving lamps uh, which was done by the municipality with uh, outside of the scope of the national program. Uh, so here I have focus on the sources of funding that uh, were used for public municipal buildings. Um, the, these are mainly EU funding plus uh, municipal co-funding. For private multifamily residential buildings, um, I already mentioned there is a national funding scheme in Bulgaria that uh, in, the, in its uh, previous period funded 100% of energy related measures only. The other measures were funded under different uh, conditions. Uh, this program is now paused and it waits for its next uh, funding period and uh, the conditions and for the next conditions. Most probably it will be not 
100% funded anymore because it was a pilot phase. Uh, but it's still under consideration, it's not ready yet. And uh, for the part of the um, renovation that I mentioned, the surrounding spaces and energy saving lamps, they were funded by the municipality with its own budget plus some uh, co funding by the uh, operation, national operational programs, which is in fact EU funding. Um, so, oof, sorry. So, what were the main challenges that were faced? For the public buildings, uh, it, uh, maybe it's everywhere like this, but in Asenograd, it's a small municipality uh, and the admin, they have insufficient administrative capacity because they are um, public servants, they deal with many different issues and they cannot focus only on uh, development of projects uh, for energy efficiency and sustainable energy uh, that match the funding requirements, which, which is a challenge for the municipality. For the private residential, the same challenge uh, applies also for the private residential. It's a, it's a basic challenge, but especially for the private um residential buildings uh it's uh, the the problem is that because it was 100 percent funded uh the citizens somehow were um, reluctant to participate in the beginning they didn't know what it is they were suspicious um what will be the consequences to their property somehow they didn't believe that someone would finance 100 percent of their private uh um, apartment refurbishment um, so it was quite a challenge the money were there but people were not willing to apply for them which is quite a strange situation I would say and the, what were the solutions for the public buildings uh, it's mainly the uh, the how to say political will and and political commitment on behalf of the municipality uh, which put uh, energy sustainability as a high priority, so um, it allowed for allocation of more resources and more time of the of the municipal servants to focus on these um, issues. For private residential buildings, uh, as I already mentioned, it started with a very extensive promotional campaign to explain to, to the people, to the citizens, what this is and why this is done and that there will be no risks for their property or they can only benefit from it if they apply. Of course, there is some administrative burden, they have to fill documents, but the municipality is there to assist them in applying, in filling the documents, in assessing their eligibility and so on. Uh, it's part of the promotional campaign actually uh, the second uh, bullet point which is pro uh, promotional success successful examples uh, through all possible means uh, and uh, but i put it as a separate uh, measure because it, it turned to be quite beneficial and important for for the municipality and uh, of course uh, the word of mouth uh, which is a very good tool especially when uh, dealing with citizens because uh, they tend to believe much more to their neighbor rather than to the official sources of information and this can be used and what is next uh, there are 53 buildings in a pipeline uh, for private residential uh, which wait, wait for financial sources to be available because the program is now uh, put on a hold, as I already explained. So they, they should be put forward when uh, financing is available. A continuation of uh, promotion and um, information uh, provision, uh, especially on funding sources because the time for grants and uh, 100% uh, financed measures is gone and uh, now other funding sources should be considered uh, which is something I 
that relates to uh, my uh, to my colleague Yele mentioned in the uh, in the beginning. If we look at the energy efficiency in buildings only as uh, uh, and only from the um, economic appraisal point of view, in some cases it's not uh, worthy. I mean, the paybacks are quite high. So, but there are of course other benefits that are um, different of, of different type, like comfort and um, uh, better environment and so on. Of course, CO two emission reduction, which is another thing. Uh, but uh, what uh, my our experience is that if this uh, it would be much better for funding for for availability of funding if these other benefits could be somehow quantified and put into the analysis in order to to make even not uh, very feasible financially feasible projects they make them more feasible but they have to be quantified somehow. Otherwise, you cannot measure them, these benefits. They are there, but they need somehow to be um, compared with the strictly qu quantitative figures like paybacks and uh, return on investment and uh, things that uh, funding institutions look at. Banks and ESCOs, they look at these figures. So, and for public municipal buildings, there are eight buildings in the pipeline to be put forward uh, as investment projects in the in the municipal in municipal integrated municipal plan that is now under preparation within Smart in City project with implementation roadmap. That means with the possible funding. I think that's from my part. Thank you for listening, to me and I am open to questions. Thank you very much, Ivanka. Um, just a quick reminder to everyone, feel free to put your um, questions in as we go along into the question box on the control panel for GoToWebinar, and we will come to those after we've finished um, presentations from our speakers. Next up, we have Susanna Belesovic, who is from the city of Rijeka. I apologize, I'm really struggling on the pronunciation, um, who is going to share her experiences with us now. Well, I, I hope you can hear me and uh, yes, hello we can. To everyone and uh, well, what about the presentation? Oh, it's here. Thank you. And uh, okay, excellent. Well, it will be a short one as we uh, just recently started with, uh, with that all uh, cycling uh, uh, program. Well, we have uh, introduced uh, four term terminals for uh, e-bikes and uh, it's total of uh, 28 uh, e-bikes. Uh, we started with uh, this uh, program in early March. Then uh, shortly after that, everything was uh, closed down. And uh, nowadays we uh, proceeded with, uh, with uh, our project, but uh, nowadays uh, our bicycles are disinfected on a daily basis and uh, for all, all additional information you also can find the link uh, here and go to the to the pages which and you can find the text also in english well what about challenges and the solution i i know that uh, 28 e bikes uh, are not uh, for most of the cities are uh, not uh, a big thing but uh, it is for yeka because uh, uh, we are not uh, as a city we are not very suitable for cycling because we are uh, very hilly as you can see from the pictures uh, town uh, and uh, we are uh, with a space of uh, only 44 square kilometers so uh, we are dealing also with the undersized uh, uh, roads and uh, of course accordingly uh, undeveloped uh, culture of uh, cycling so the solution is to start with a small scale that's uh, why we started with the 28 uh, uh, e-bikes we uh, uh, we have chosen our locations very carefully uh, we promoted and talked about uh, our uh, uh, bikes and of course uh, 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 
all the time we have a bigger bigger picture in uh, in mind so we will proceed with with the uh, with the uh, new terminals with the new bikes etc uh, etc et and uh, just a few words about uh, you here you can see our terminals and uh, uh, of course this project is in line with all our strategic uh, uh, documents it aims to encourage uh, urban mobility and enable uh, development of alternative forms of uh, movement around the city. And uh, uh, so now we have that four stations. Uh, our e-bikes are equipped with a high power uh, battery because, uh, as I mentioned, because we are quite a, a hilly town, so it is. Uh, 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 Ne it was necessity. Uh, our project was partly financed by the Ministry of uh, Tourism, at, as it will be also used by uh, the, the tourists one day when they will be back uh, in our town. And as I said, uh, uh, we are all already planning uh, 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 new stations, and that's about. Uh, uh, our uh, our project. Uh, uh, so, w what will be the kind of conclusion is that uh, uh, even we are not uh, very suitable, we can start start small, but uh, uh, our plans are of course uh, bigger. And that's that. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Anna, can we just move on to the next slide then? Uh, right, so next up we've got uh, Daniela Alexieva from Burgas Municipality, who's going to be talking about the urban sharing platform that they've developed as part of Sharing Cities. Daniela, over to you. Hello, Daniela. Is that the one? Yes, yes. Uh, you might just want to get a little bit closer to the computer because the quality of the sound isn't very high. Hello. Go Hello. ahead, Daniela. I'm online. Yes, you I are. Can see you. you should be able to see your uh, presentation there now. Okay, I and see your have... presentation. Thank you. Yep. Uh, so uh, I will tell you about uh, our efforts to create an urban sharing platform in Burgas. Can you move the slide, please? Ah, okay. Не мога бе? Где? If you just click on it, it should go through to the next slide. Тук е тук е тук е тук е тук е. Треква. Жанна Курова. Тук да не, не, остана, да не излезохме. Там не е изкупано. Sorry, uh, can you wait a little because... Uh... Да, да, да. Да. На скайп. На кое? Знаете, че се чувате. Your slides are working now, Daniela. I don't see the slide because uh, I will have to uh, start my screen again. Okay. The current Sorry. slide is just a photo of you and Jana. So if you want to go on to the next one, we can we can start. Mm 
Малко отворя го направо. Не, не, не са тия да махай. Затвори всичко. Откъде влезе, бе? Влез на много това. Is there anybody that can go first and I will be next? No, unfortunately you're the last speaker, Daniela. So if you want to... Have you got a copy of your slides? Because we can... No problem, but I think that we will fix it in a minute. Okay, maybe you can start talking um, while it's okay. being fixed, if that's possible. Okay, so the city on the Black Sea coast, uh, it is 2,000, uh, 200,000 uh, people, and uh, uh, Burgas uh, as a city strategy. That uh, we have a smart city strategy, which uh, uh, goes uh, for the city to become one of the smartest cities in Bulgaria. Uh, just uh, for the people that don't know, uh, uh, our city is uh, a port city, um, uh, has uh, quite a lot of um, uh, territories uh, protected by Nature 2000, uh, and um, a city with uh, quite a, a long uh, historical background. Um, but now is developing uh, as a modern city. The uh, city is uh, uh, the final uh, stop of the TNT network and has uh, very good connectivity uh, in all aspects. Uh, So I will just say a few words also. My name is Jana. I'm the coordinator of the project. This was my project manager. A few words about starting uh, about the, the essence. Uh, so Burgas had this ambition to develop in a smart way. Um, when we started, it was in uh, 2015. Uh, there was a strong political will to start developing the city in a smart way because we had already realized very uh, let's say, um, some some important uh, efforts to develop the infrastructure of the city and then we realized that we have to make it in a smart way and decided to build upon what we have done so far. Uh, so we started with the strategic planning, we started with changing our uh, planning documents and uh, then uh, we just said to ourselves, uh, well, the smart city has, is something that already exists in numerous uh, European cities and in other cities in the world. So let's just check what we can exchange with other cities and participate in projects and just not try to reinvent the things that already exist and ju just to get inspired from solutions, intelligent uh, solutions that already exist in other cities. And this is how uh, we uh, decided to participate in the Sharing Cities project and then we uh, then we started participating in the Sharing Cities project. Uh, we were a follower city uh, with Bordeaux and Warsaw. We had uh, three lighthouse cities, uh, London, Lisbon and Milan. Uh, this project was funded uh, by, is still funded by Horizon 2020. Uh, it goes upon um, five years, 85 millions of uh, Financement from uh, from the from the funds from the European Union, and actually we have different levels of involvement. We have co-design, validate, and implement. And the city of Burgas was very much uh, involved in the in the building retrofit. Actually, 
uh, also in the e-mobility, smart home posts, and the urban platform was something that in the very beginning was only planned in the bid. We just plan to, to do to do co-design but actually by the end of the project now we arrived at the extent of, of implementing because we were able because of our collaboration with the other lighthouse cities and the follower cities to create our own urban share platform that was completely funded by the the, the municipality of Burgas because we didn't have budget under the the bid so the city uh, succeeded to, to have some funding and to create this platform uh, the platform itself uh, so the starting point was that we realized that it will be easier to create uh, uh, a separate company that is 100 percent municipality owned but this gives some independence to the company on one side and on the other side uh, it's more flexible and it's easier for the municipality to have like other activities that are now directly uh, part of the typical activities of the public authorities. So this company was created with the, the objective and the aim to develop all intelligent projects on the territory of the city to develop the platform itself, but also other, other innovative uh, solutions to implement on the, and digital uh, solutions and technologies to, to create. And the, this company started operating in 2016. And uh, so far it developed a, a very impressive uh, activity. So this was uh, this municipal company who created this uh, urban shared platform. So the urban shared platform itself has 18 modules. As you can see, they enumerated here. So it's available online, but also we have an application. It goes from uh, the free parking spaces and uh, to, to the air quality and weather information, to video surveillance, to waste management. Um, we have these separate modules. Uh, I, I think this is, uh, well, the typical thing that uh, all the cities have when we when created the, the integrated urban platform. These are the basic modules that you, you create. We have it in Bulgarian and also in English. The good thing is that we had the, the, the opportunity, well, it's a bad thing, the COVID-19, but in the same time, it's, it's a challenge, but also an opportunity so we could explore um, how the platform could operate about uh, situations like this when you have a crisis or something. So we could create a separate module that was dedicated to, to this COVID-19 thing let's call it, and um, we were able to deliver very useful information to all users. So now we will, I will just present the challenges and the obstacles. It will be Daniela who will explain more in details about those because, uh, okay, we are, crowd, we are very proud of what we created. We know that it's a humble effort, it's only the beginning. So we will just grow, go through the steps and through the challenges and obstacles and the solutions that we experienced all the way long. So I pass the word to Daniela. The, the creation of the platform um, was a challenge because in Burgas we had a different intelligence system which uh, uh, worked uh, separately and we needed uh, an integrated uh, uh, place where we can uh, share the information between the systems and at the same time uh, this place to be well reachable for the citizens where they can get the best possible and the most uh, uh, full information about uh, the city. That's why our urban sharing platform uh, uh, sh ex exposes uh, static information which is uh, shown on maps and geolocated. Uh, for each object uh, there is um, uh, a static information as an input and at the same time uh, where the object uh, uh, has information uh, related to some or one of the systems uh, which uh, gives uh, uh, dynamic information. It is uh, shown as well for each object uh, uh, on the uh, level of um, 
mapping of the objects and uh, on the next level uh, uh, as aggregated information it is uh, shown on uh, the, uh, the uh, general dashboard. The uh, challenges uh, while we uh, created uh, our platform was that uh, uh, we had uh, to collect uh, all the information uh, available and it was quite uh, a long process uh, uh, having in mind that not, not all the information uh, was uh, digitalized. Uh, the uh, integration of the uh, data on the platform and the migration of the uh, different uh, uh, data sets uh, was uh, done quite uh, uh, in a very fast uh, way because uh, we uh, really uh, did a lot of preparatory work and uh, almost for for three months we finished everything uh, and um, uh, presented it to the public. Now of course the platform is um, beta version and uh, it is in constant develop development um, especially for uh, the reason that our intelligence systems which provide uh, uh, online uh, data um, are uh, not covering all the systems are not covering the whole city so when we uh, extend uh, the coverage uh, uh, of uh, the uh, data flows. This means that the, the platform um, as well uh, expands the information that is provided uh, for the public. Our platform has, uh, except the public interface, uh, uh, an expert interface. Mm, the experts uh, uh, interface is uh, different from that of the public because it provides uh, much more information which is uh, dedicated uh, to help the experts in their everyday life uh, in their uh, operations. It is used uh, not only by the servants of the municipality but as well by the companies uh, which uh, uh, are subcontracted uh, different uh, mm, services for the municipality. For example, maintaining of the video cameras, maintaining of the uh, parking uh, lots, etc. Uh, on the hand of uh, how, how the platform was uh, was accepted by the citizens, uh, the uh, we were uh, stunned because uh, it was uh, very well accepted and um, uh, everybody that uh, had a word uh, for the platform was only that um, uh, it is appreciated and uh, there is an expectation for further development. Uh, it is interesting to emphasize here the business model that uh, we uh, implement. Uh, the first uh, thing is that the entity which creates the platform is 100% owned by the municipality. Mm, and uh, at the moment we are preparing our business models for providing uh, paid services uh, which uh, will uh, provide a positive cash flow um, and uh, is the uh, burden uh, for the municipality. From the um, point of view of uh, the competencies and risks uh, um, in Burgas, uh, it is uh, difficult to find enough qualified staff to, to maintain the separate systems and uh, to uh, develop new algorithms 
for integration of the data from the different systems. Uh, but uh, we as a commercial company are more flexible than the municipality and we work with um, subcontractors, small IT companies, uh, which are locally based and which offer better uh, prices for their uh, services. And that is how uh, we try to optimize uh, the quality of the product on one hand and uh, on the other hand, um, this is a very much more fast way uh, for for reaching the uh, the goal uh, the, the, the 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 final uh, uh, implementation because uh, we avoid uh, uh, long public procurement procedures under the Bulgarian law when the owner municipality orders some uh, services to uh, its own uh, company like innovative systems, Burgas LTD, which is 100% owned. This is a direct ordering, in-house order. And the, the main risks which uh, we try to cover are the uh, data security, of course, aspects of developing of the platform. Uh, the um, connections are uh, only uh, 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 provided, most of the connections are secured uh, uh, by uh, uh, closed VPNs and um, uh, um, most of the sensors uh, uh, communicate through our own optical uh, network, which is owned by the municipality as well. Uh, the regulatory and juridical uh, challenges uh, are uh, the uh, compliance with the GDPR, we, which at the moment we don't find uh, very difficult to cope with. Uh, um, and uh, the other interesting uh, hindrance which we uh, uh, have in Bulgaria is that uh, our uh, law uh, of electronic governance uh, provides uh, some restrictions uh, uh, for data exchange between the administration and the administration systems uh, uh, with third party systems. And a third party system is any other system than that owned by the municipality or the government. But uh, I think that uh, from a legislation point of view, there will be improvements soon because this is uh, a problem that uh, is um, seen in, in all Bulgarian municipalities. The data availability uh, is uh, the core of, of the effective uh, uh, representation of the life of the city uh, uh, on the platform. Uh, in Burgas uh, we have uh, still uh, quite a lot of work to do because uh, not all of the city is uh, covered uh, with sensors. We have, uh, for example, um, um, projects which uh, are related to uh, parking. We have uh, sensors in the parking lots uh, for only uh, 50 parking places uh, and uh, the uh, paid uh, zone in um, the city is uh, 4,000 uh, parking places. At the moment, uh, uh, a process of uh, um, awarding uh, uh, a, a project related to uh, management of uh, uh, the paid uh, parking zone by sensors uh, in the um, 
uh, asphalt uh, is uh, uh, prepared, but uh, we have um, systems which uh, are uh, showing uh, the public uh, parking lots uh, and they uh, show the availability of parking uh, spaces. Uh, the data ownership uh, as well is something to be commented when it uh, comes to the data that could be provided by the utility companies. It's not very easy to exchange that data uh, with them because the utility companies are not obliged by law to, to share their information uh, on non-commercial basis which uh, in fact uh, uh, puts the municipality in, in uh, a position that uh, has to uh, create uh, some um, special um, commercial uh, alternative uh, uh, or other alternative ways to, to avoid uh, uh, spending for uh, purchasing of data from utility companies. Sorry to interrupt, Daniela. Um, we uh, could you um, wrap up in the next couple of minutes, so we still have some time for some yes. questions and answers. Thank you. Uh, the the best uh, practices um, which we can share are uh, that uh, the uh, integrated. Uh, platform uh, is considered our uh, main asset uh, and we uh, augment uh, different uh, services uh, on the platform. Uh, we are trying uh, to uh, prepare uh, services uh, which uh, uh, can uh, um, stimulate social activity by giving rabbits uh, based on uh, the social activity of the uh, citizens, which up to now, without the platform, we could not do. Uh, the private uh, partnership with uh, the Burgas uh, uh, municipal company I shared with you. And uh, as well, it is very important that um, uh, we have political support on each step of the implementation of the uh, platform. I, another uh, uh, supportive thing is that uh, the Burgas municipality provides uh, uh, pilot projects which uh, uh, in which we try different technologies and we uh, do uh, integration first then we expand the number of uh, the uh, uh, sensors the uh, use of uh, own optical network I uh, as well shared with you uh, lowers the cost uh, for the communications. Uh, about the COVID, uh, it was very successful uh, work that we did because we very quickly, uh, on uh, based on the uh, uh, models which we had, uh, geolocation of objects and everything, uh, we created very good uh, information board uh, for the citizens of Burgas uh, in the pandemic situation with COVID and uh, stimulated as well uh, the stay at home by providing uh, su uh, support uh, for teachers uh, uh, and parents uh, which could uh, uh, educate uh, their children um, at home. Uh, for the next steps, uh, uh, we uh, are working on new models uh, in which uh, we uh, tend uh, to have uh, um, integration with uh, uh, platforms uh, uh, which, which can uh, sell uh, services uh, uh, of uh, third parties, like, for example, business companies, uh, um, within the city or cultural institutions or uh, hotels even. To promote the platform among users and uh, uh, as well we want to share and we try to share our experience with other Bulgarian cities which can as well um, be uh, a, 
helpful uh, in their efforts uh, to uh, Im uh, implement partially even uh, uh, the use of uh, modules uh, similar to ours, but uh, based on our infrastructure and hardware. This is all. Thank you very much from Burgas. Thank you very much, Daniela and Jana. Um, it's question time uh, now. Um, we have a few questions in the uh, question box already. Once again, if you have a question, please uh, either raise your hand via the function in the control panel um, or uh, put it in the box. Uh, and I will ask it on your behalf. Um, so I'll start with some of the questions in the box because I can't see any hands up yet. Um, question for Susanna uh, regarding e-bikes project. How does the program help to create a cycling culture in a hilly city? And who are the actors and partners that can make this happen? Susanna, can you just uh, unmute yourself? Susanna. I'm here. Excellent. Excellent. Um, a question regarding your e-bikes and how it helps promote yes. uh, cycling culture and who the actors are. Sorry? Can you repeat uh, it? Sure. The question is, how does the program of e-bikes help to create a cycling culture, particularly in a hilly city? Yes. And who yes. are the actors and partners that can make this happen? Yes. <clears throat> well, uh, uh, first problem was that uh, with the ordinary bike, like let's say, it's uh, really hard to reach uh, uh, several parts of the of the uh, of the city. So uh, uh, it was uh, it was the first problem. So uh, e-bikes are a solution for that. So even the people. Uh, 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 who wouldn't be able to to reach that uh, uh, some parts of the city with uh, regular bikes? They uh, this uh, e-bikes will enable them to to uh, to use the bikes uh, uh, as uh, as they are. So that's 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 the starting point for for us uh, uh, for us in this uh, uh, whole project. And uh, uh, you can said uh, you can see that uh, also on the uh, that Ricicletta site that uh, uh, all the bikes are uh, uh, are uh, in use. So uh, it's it, it is really interesting because uh, we start from nothing, and now we have uh, uh, it. Uh, you, it can be borrowed uh, uh, from the morning till 10 uh, p.m. and uh, mainly the whole day, if it's not uh, very rainy, they are in use. So it's uh, it's uh, I suppose it's a good starting point uh, for for a project uh, of uh, of uh, of spreading uh, cycling culture through the city of Rijeka. Thank you. Um, I know from uh, our experience on sharing cities as well that uh, Lisbon was in a similar situation, being a very hilly city, and they found their e-bike adding e-bikes to their to their bike fleet, uh, their city bike fleet has been really increased the amount of cycling going on um, because it makes it a lot easier to get up hills with some uh, with an electric boost on your bike. Um, yes. Before you go away, Susanna, we have another question about e-bikes, which is. Um, yes. Uh, how you manage the maintenance of the bikes in the city and if there's a unit within the city administration or have you uh, procured a private provider yes. to do that yes. maintenance? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, we conducted a, a public procurement for uh, the operator and uh, now we uh, sign an agreement uh, for a year and then we uh, of course, next year we will have a, 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 a new procurement for the, 
And if uh, uh, till the next year, uh, now because uh, of the COVID situation, we are not, uh, we do not have uh, uh, enormous uh, amounts of money for, for different projects. It affected us a lot, uh, but uh, 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 we, we will find the modes uh, if uh, we opt for the, we will uh, of course have uh, new bikes. But uh, uh, for the time being, uh, we uh, procured uh, 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 an operator for the bikes. Okay, great. Um, keep the questions coming, people. Um, we have uh, two questions regarding the urban sharing platform for uh, Burgas. Um, one is about uh, whether you have any ideas uh, already for more citizen engagement and public participation. And also um, just a question about why the word sharing is used in the title rather than perhaps something else because it sounds more like a, um, a, more like a, an e-governance platform. So I don't know if uh, Jana or Daniela want to take that one. We call it Urban Sharing Platform in the Sharing Cities program. Our platform, in fact, is called uh, uh, Integrated uh, Urban Platform. Uh, and uh, if you look it uh, uh, on the web, uh, www.smartburgas.eu, you will see that uh, it combines a lot of information and it is uh, quite interesting. Uh, um, it has a model for uh, public engagement, which uh, uh, is under development. Um, at the moment, uh, it only uh, shows uh, uh, questions to the citizens uh, on uh, hot themes and they can vote through our platform. As well, we have uh, a contact model where they can share their uh, demands uh, or, or their uh, uh, positive or, or negative uh, uh, remarks uh, related to the uh, city of Burgas. But as I already said, the uh, acceptance is uh, very good. Uh, and uh, sorry, just to add something. Um, as we mentioned during the presentation, it's very hard to to engage people and citizens and to promote what we have done so far. So this is something that already exists, but we still are looking uh, for appropriate way to inform people that this that there is a avail availability of such services and how to how to inform them that they can be informed. So, uh, so uh, we have done already some uh, promotion. Of, of the platform, but still it's very difficult uh, to get people involved. And the second question, sorry, it was what? Uh, I think I think you added the second one first. So I think the question really was about if you any more ideas around citizen engagement or public participation, as you had mentioned in the final slide. Uh, well, this is the thing that uh, as this is a process. So this is something that we continue uh, all the time to develop. So we have a chat box. We have, but sorry, uh, we we really try to 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 make people part of this adventure. Um, no concrete steps, uh, but still, this is something that becomes very popular, and uh, the the things the thing that always works uh, the best. It's uh, uh, how to say uh, from from one pe person to another when people just inform themselves like. Uh, share the positive feelings and uh, this is the best way to distribute. So, Daniela, uh, let me add something else. Because uh, when you try to, to turn the platform into a public engagement uh, platform, uh, it uh, uh, can, can lose uh, its uh, emphasis on the data of the smart city. In fact, our first idea is in this platform to, to give total uh, information about the life of the city, the opportunities which it 
uh, offers and the services it offers. This is the first and most important goal that we uh, set to us when we created the integrated platform. And then on that pace, the, uh, as far as we have talked uh, uh, to the people from the municipality, they uh, plan or they would like to have a much more extended uh, uh, public engagement model, which will be integrated in the platform later. But it will be uh, as, as additional uh, I, I, uh, system. It will be an additional system. Okay, thank you very much, Jana and Daniela. It sounds like it's it's definitely a work in progress. That there's a lot of potential there with the uh, with the um, platform to take it further. Uh, I don't know that we've got many other questions. There's just one regarding um, whether there are any examples of data collection on how people are using urban parks. Um, I'm not necessarily familiar with any of that variety. I don't know if um, Yella, if that's something that you've come across in, in your work, uh, if um, smart uh, systems are being used for that sort of monitoring. Uh, the urban uh, green system, this is uh, our next uh, model that we are uh, developing at the moment. It is uh, mm -hmm. uh, related to the geographical information system that we are um, at the moment uh, uh, putting uh, in place uh, in, in Burgas uh, and uh, we are gathering uh, the data that will be uh, exposed uh, to the public uh, probably at the end of the year uh, which will show all the green spaces uh, all the uh, uh, yards uh, for doing uh, sports and uh, recreational activities, uh, all the um, uh, fountains uh, in the city. Uh, this is for the public part and uh, on uh, the other uh, part uh, for the experts, uh, uh, we will have um, a model which uh, will uh, provide uh, uh, the instrumentation of the experts related to the maintenance of the green uh, uh, city um, spots uh, and cutting the trees to mm -hmm. um, to do their work and uh, order for the subcontractors uh, to provide maintenance of the green spaces in the city. Okay, that's great. Thanks, Jana. Um, it's a uh, very, uh, and Daniela, sounds like a very good um, uh, use of the platform, both sort of as a citizen directed, public directed tool, as well as one for, for some of the services that are being undertaken. Um, I have um, one final question um, before we wrap up, because um, we are already three minutes over time. Um, there's a question here, which is actually quite a nice uh, wrap up question, actually. So we're going to go with that. Um, so for each of the fellow cities uh, or follower cities as part of smart cities and communities projects, um, what um, I think is basically what was uh, your experience of uh, trying to replicate? So I think if you could just give us what a, a small couple of words or a sentence that really captures your experience of participating in the SCCC project and the, the experience of replication. Um, shall we start with Mauro? Yes, of course. Well, Thanks. Uh, I have a, only one word is knowledge, knowledge and knowledge. No? Uh, thanks to to be a follow city, we can uh, see the experience of uh, of the lighthouse cities, and this experience give us uh, give us a, a, a knowledge to to replay and not uh, not make the the, the same faults or, or do the, the do the best in in our project. This is the the, the resume the sum of, of the uh, to be a follow city in this project. Excellent. Um, Ivanka, would you like to sum up your experience briefly? Uh, hello, yes, of course. Uh, so for us, partici to participate in such a project uh, as Martin City Project was very crucial in order 
to know what to do. So my my answer is rather similar to uh, Mauro's because uh, in order to do something, you have to see examples. But not only that, I mean, uh, not only within our project, we have very good cooperation with all smart, uh, okay, maybe not all, but most smart uh, city, cities project, which is a very good initiative on behalf of um, INEA and, and uh, other projects as well, also with the JANA from Burgas and others. So, um, yeah, knowledge, seeing what else, uh, what is done and how successful it was, seeing what was not done or had some um, had problems or, or couldn't be done. So this is, this is the most important, yes. Great, Susanna? Uh, well, uh, except uh, from the uh, knowledge, knowledge and knowledge, uh, it's <laughs> often also money, money and money. <laughs> yes, because it's a pra pragmatic <laughs> response there. <laughs> yes, yes, because uh, uh, well, we already it's it's uh, uh, of course it's a question of uh, scaling because uh, uh, often light coast cities are uh, big cities. And it's not uh, always easy to replicate uh, some uh, uh, big cities uh, solution to the uh, small or medium cities. And uh, uh, and as I said, uh, uh, we have a lot of lot of uh, uh, projects in in different fields, uh, from retrofitting to mobility uh, to uh, energy. But uh, but it's often about uh, 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 financing of the of the uh, project and also financing of the uh, replication mm -hmm. definitely so i think so far we've got knowledge we've got finance and funding um uh, translating and adapting uh measures to yes. local context yes and yes. i and I'm just going to finally throw it to uh, Daniela and uh, Jana. Yes, uh, just to, to say a few words about uh, the replication process. Uh, well, this was something very new for us when we started implementing this project. Uh, and we are really delighted because uh, in the very beginning it was not really clear for us. Uh, how the things will happen exactly because we had clear measures for the lighthouse cities and then we were supposed to replicate and then we had a very good experience because we had the chance to have Lisbon, to have uh, London and to have Milan. We have very positive exchanges and actually um, what happened really, uh, we, we had visits uh, on the spot and then we were able to see all the smart solutions that were uh, implemented by the lighthouse cities and then to bring all the knowledge as you already mentioned here at home but the yeah what was necessary it was to adapt it to the local conditions because Burgas is like 200 people 200,000 people of inhabitants and the lighthouse cities are more than a million and uh, well we made the humble how to say um, implementation of these measures they were really adapted to the, to the local context and but the inspiration was there so we learned so much and this is what we advanced uh, so fast because these measures were already developed in those cities and we were directly able to apply them here at local context but adapt it and not to lose like 10 years to develop again those measures um, and the other thing is that uh, we we were we now consider that we are able to scale up what we have realized because um, what we have here like the this smart platform we have realized uh, concretely is something that is I mean we can scale it up we can we can we can sell it to other cities we consider <laughs> this is not very modest but still uh, and. Uh, <laughs> How to say, I think it's a very good practice that other Bulgarians this can spot. So for us, it was a very positive experience yeah. to participate. Yeah, I, I, I Excellent. Thank you very much, Jonna. Um, uh, thank you to all our speakers, Mar uh, Jela, Maro, Ivanka, Susanna, Daniela and Jana. That's all been um, a very useful um,
an insightful uh, reflection on your experiences of replicating um, particular smart city solutions in your cities uh, as part of the um, smart cities and communities projects. I think what stood out for me are several things. One is that despite, you know, that a lot of the challenges and enablers, the barriers, et cetera, that are, were um, uh, reflected by, by Yella in his presentation, um, certainly came through in a lot of the experiences of replication in the fellow cities, but um, that there was a lot of um, ingenuity and innovation in looking at different ways to um, get around those challenges and to enable uh, replication to go ahead. And I think what we also saw from those uh, closing comments from the fellow cities was that it was um, whilst challenging, I'm sure, and frustrating at times, the, the takeaway for, for everyone is, is a relatively positive experience, that it is something that has been valuable and a huge learning experience um, for those involved, um, that knowledge and knowledge sharing and learning from other people's mistakes, as well as maybe making some new ones yourself, are uh, super important, um, and which is uh, something that this whole you know community of smart cities um, is is really about is that sharing and helping to uh, to move the whole community along a lot further in terms of replication. Um, funding continues to remain um, a challenge for one and all, and I think you know we continue to work on areas like business models and financing to really take that forward. Forward, um, in the future and there's certainly some quite a bit of work going on by the uh, European Commission DG Energy in particular just to, to really tackle some of those issues and I think um, you know I, finally um, it's uh, it's really encouraging to see also that it, you know we now have some fellow cities who are becoming lighthouse cities in their own right but also that we have fellow cities who are now moving from replication to scale up, which is also very exciting. So despite all those challenges, and they are there, um, I think uh, it's really given uh, space for, for innovation and ingenuity in replication. And um, the sort of uh, format of learning from others is immensely valuable. Um, just to finally, close off. Um, I just wanted to thank everyone for uh, participating and for attending our webinar and also for the very interesting and, and sometimes challenging questions that you've posed. Um, as you can see, all the contact information is there. Uh, if you want to get in touch with the Smart Cities Information System or uh, have a look at the tools available on the website, uh, um, subscribe to the newsletter, look at videos, keep up to date with what's happening via Twitter. Um, there are often a lot of different webinars and city dialogues in this space, so it's definitely worth um, subscribing to some of those so that you don't miss out. Once again, thank you very much for your participation. Um, the uh, recording of this webinar will be um, put on the SCIS website and you will be emailed with a link to it. Um, so feel free to share that around with others who've missed out. Once again, thank you very much and have a good rest of your afternoon. Thank you.